Welcome to the InfraVision YouTube channel. In this video we're going to explain how to use the reservations module in Formi. Now during this explanation we assume that you are relatively familiar with Formi and that you at least understand how creating a change flow works and how creating a request template works. If that is not the case then of course feel free to contact us for a more elaborate demo of Formi. The first step in implementing the reservations module is to create configuration items for all the things for which you want to make reservations. So that could be things like laptops, bikes, uh, parking spots, cars, whatever you can think of that would require a reservation. In our use case we are going to use laptops which are already in my configuration management database. So this is the list of laptops that we want to allow people to reserve. The next step is to create what we call a reservation offering. So you go to the records console, select reservation offerings and you see that I already have two of them in place. So let's look at this specific one. Open it in edit mode and then you see that the reservation offering has a name. So in my case I will create an offering for field research laptops so laptops that people can take outside to do some research and enter data you link it to a service instance you identify a calendar so the reservation should fall within the time frame of monday through friday between 9 a.m and 5 p.m in the amsterdam time zone the initial status of the reservation is confirmed you can also select pending, which means that someone has to manually approve the reservation and set the status of the reservation to confirmed. The minimum duration is the minimum time that a reservation should last. The maximum duration is of course the maximum duration of the reservation. Step duration are the increments. So between one hour and eight hours, I can say that for example, the increments should be one hour. The preparation duration is the time that we need to prepare the item before it can be handed out. So it gives you some time for uh, preparations. So let's say that is one hour as well. And this uh, minimum the preparation duration is also applicable between reservations. So between two uh, subsequent reservations, there's always one hour reserved for the preparations. The minimum advance duration is similar to the preparation, but in this case there is no prior reservation. It's just the time that you need to prepare the item between the moment that the reservation is made and the time that the person is actually picking up the reserved item. Maximum advance duration indicates uh, how long beforehand is someone allowed to reserve the item. You can define filters that help people uh, selecting the correct item a bit easier while making the reservation. So in my case, I added the site field to the filter list. You can create your own custom properties via UI extensions as well. And the configuration items that you link are the actual items that can be reserved under this reservation offering. The next step is to create a request template so that people can actually make a reservation for the items. So you go to the records console, request templates. In my case, I already created an example. So reserve a field research laptop. Let's open this in edit mode. And this is basically a normal uh, request template. So there's nothing really special about it other than that I have linked a reservation offering to the template. So I selected the category reservation that allows me to uh, link a reservation offering. And I also included a change template. So this is basically how you set up the uh, request template for making the reservations. And in my case, I linked a change template because I want to kick off a certain workflow as soon as a field research laptop is being reserved. So for example, you want to kick off a workflow that includes an approval task, or maybe people need to do some preparations, some specific preparations that you want to list in a change task. 
So for those cases, you can make use of a template. If you do not use a template, that's also possible. Then your uh, reservations will be immediately accepted. And for me, we'll handle them completely automatically. So not linking a change template could, for example, be used for meeting rooms or conference rooms in where people just reserve a certain time frame to have that room available and nobody needs to approve or prepare those rooms for use. So I will come back to the change template later. First, let's take a look at how you actually create the reservation. So as a service desk analyst, you go to the service desk console, select your requester, select the service, in this case, personal computing. And here you now have a reservation request template available. So you click that one and you end up in this interface in where you can see the availability and the existing reservations. You can use the filter to locate a specific laptop that is, for example, in stock at your location. You can zoom in a little bit and then by clicking, you can create a new reservation. You can additionally extend the time that you want to make the reservation for. So let's say between one and five. Click save and now you have created the reservation for Matt Leach. And what you also can do to define the time frame for which you want to make the reservation is just click somewhere and then use drag and drop to extend the reservation. So that's also possible. And when you make your request template visible for end users, those end users can also create reservations themselves. They end up in exactly the same screen that a service desk analyst would use. They can zoom in, select the time frame for their reservation and complete creating the reservation from here. For every reservation, Formi will automatically create an accompanying request. Now it is important to understand that this request will never be visible in anyone's inbox, specifically because the status is set to either change pending when you're using a change flow to complete the reservation. And if you are not using a change flow, then the status will be reservation pending. But in either cases, the request will never show up in someone's inbox which is important to understand that if you want to make preparations or you need an approval, you should always include a change workflow in your reservation. And what is also important to understand is that these are actually valid requests. So they will show up in your reporting and in your backlog and in the number of created and completed requests. And you can easily access an overview of all the reservations within for me when you go to the records console then select reservations then you see all reservations the one that are currently active so the reservation start and end date fall between the current date and time and the past reservations are those of which the end date is already expired now let's go back to our use case, the reservation and preparation of a laptop, which includes an approval task and a preparation task. And I also want to verify whether or not the item was returned in time. So to handle this workflow, I created a change template. It is called field laptop reservation, and it is a pretty simple workflow. It contains an approval task, uh, Someone from the service desk can complete this task when the item has been returned so that we can check whether or not that was damaged or missing or returned uh, too late, for example. And I also have prepared a task for the operations team to reset the configuration and maybe do some cleaning if the, this thing was used in the field. Now, this workflow is a bit more challenging than it might seem. The reservation approval is pretty straightforward, but this task is completed as soon as the reserved item is being returned. Now the reservation could be made maybe even months in advance, and also the reservation might span multiple weeks. So in those cases, what you do not want probably is this task to be already visible in the inbox of the team or the person that should verify whether or not the item is returned in time. 
And what is also challenging is when someone is processing this task, they probably would want to know which item they expect to be returned. So to handle this scenario in an elegant way, we need an automation rule. So I have created an automation rule and let's look at what this is doing. So the automation rule is triggered as soon as the status of a task is updated and we look at whether or not the status is set to assigned, which basically means that the task becomes active. These two statements are a bit more complicated. You really have to be familiar with the way for me is creating records and the relationships. But basically what we are doing is from the task in which we are currently located, we go to the change, go to the linked request, and then take the CI from the reservation. So in this case, we retrieve the reserved CI. And the end of reservation, we do something very similar. But in this case, we take the end date and time of the reservation. Now we have two actions in this automation rule. The first one is to add a node, which indicates which CI we're actually expecting to be returned. And the second action is to set the start date of the task equal to the end of reservation date and time, which means that this task is automatically activated as soon as the reservation is ending. So let's look at the workflow. The first step, as you hopefully remember, was an approval task. So someone needs to approve the reservation. This task is showing it up in my inbox. And before I apply the approval, I will open both the change and the request in a separate tab. Then I give the approval. So when we look at the reservation in the request, we see that the reservation is ending at September 30 at two o'clock in the afternoon. Now we go to the change and look at the workflow. We see that the task for confirming the return of the item is automatically activated. You see that the automation rule successfully added the configuration item that should be returned. And the start date is automatically set to start no earlier than, and this is the actual end date of the reservation. And the specialist is warned that he or she should not start working on the task yet. And when the laptop is returned, then the confirmation task is completed. And then the next task is automatically assigned and that is for the operations team to clean and reset the laptop. So let's say they also completed their part of the work. So this task is also set to complete it, which means that the change is automatically set to complete it. And therefore, uh, normally the request would also be completed. And what is important to understand is that the request in this case is independent of the change that might be linked. So in this case, the change is completed, but the request is still open. Normally the request is automatically completed by Fumi, but in this case, the reservation is in the future. So the status is still reservation pending. So the statuses of these requests that specifically are meant for reservations are automatically completed by for me as soon as the reservation is expired. So you don't need to manually maintain any of these records. You don't have to go to reservations and complete a reservation here. It will automatically be moved into past as soon as the end date is expired. And as soon as that is the case, the accompanying request is automatically completed by Fumi as well. So hopefully this gave you a good first impression of the power and the flexibility of the reservations module in Fumi. If not, let us know in the comments and we will add some additional explanation. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.